So in this video, I want to share with you guys the palettes that were released this summer that I think are definitely worth the hype or the anti-hype or the infamy and that you guys can still get your hands on, I'm pretty sure. And some I think will um, carry on through the next season. But anyway, so there's actually just three that I want to share with you guys and these are eyeshadow palettes. One I have a, um, is the entire category and that range that they've released. So I'll begin with the two palettes that are from, I guess you can say mid-range luxury brands. They're not really luxury but um, I'm sure that you've heard of these palettes and that you've seen the 10 million videos and swatches that came with them. So I will share with you guys why I think it's worth the hype, why you should get it, and what my favorite shades are in those palettes. So the first two are these two palettes right here. Now with just me flashing it, I'm sure you guys know what this is. Um, I'll begin with the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette. I have I have owned all the Naked palettes since the very first one and I've lost count. I think they have four now, but honestly this is the only Naked palette that has remained in my top shelf. So usually I will purchase it, but it will somehow just remain in my collection or in my stash of palettes or my drawer. But when it's in my top shelf, that means I have it in rotation and I'm actually using it on a day, well not on a daily basis but on rotation enough that I have it in my drawers of most used or reached for products so I'm sure you guys have seen this palette this is how it looks I love warm palettes now I think for the eye I always need to make sure I have a warm shade and sometimes because these are so gorgeous you only need one or two so I think my favorite are the first five right here. I think for a daily look, they're gorgeous. Lumber is probably for me the most new unique. It's like a, a very bronzy rose gold, which looks like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is like heat actually. It's I wouldn't say it's a rose gold, it's like a bronzed up rose gold. This is how it looks in the back of my hand. It's just very warm. It's a warm bronze gold, and I think for me, I find that that is the most unique. And then the shade beside it, the two shades, Sauced and Low Blow, are both mattes, and it's this two right here, Sauced and, and Low Blow, and they're just perfect daily crease shadows. If you don't really wanna do anything dramatic and you're just gonna step out to run some errands, absolutely perfect, and then it's, certain shadows like this that you can begin with and really build up throughout the day and a lot of these these three pal um, shadows here towards the end that I'm holding are beautiful matte shades and I'm going to show you and not only that I really ha like how these look at these mattes I really like how these shadows are pigmented it's not you really get the color that you see on the on the palette with the other naked with the other naked palettes it was just I don't know it never so these are the three mattes that's not even a good swatch you guys but that's how they look with the other naked palettes for some reason like the undertone when I had it on my lid would just pull a certain way that I did not expect but with the naked heat they really translate to the eye the way that you see them on the pen. And also the color story of this. I think this is by far my favorite. I think this would be up there in terms of my most favorite warm palette with a lot of very unique shades. And then ounce right here is a beautiful base as well. Usually if I have a palette I would need to grab a base, like my my Wet n Wild base that I just take with me everywhere. But I think this is a palette that really daily wear or from day to night works. So I think it, this is the best Naked palette by Urban Decay as well. So I highly recommend this palette. The next palette I want to share with you guys is the very infamous Subculture Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. 
Um, regardless of what the review said, because in Canada we obviously get things a little later than the US, which sucks, but I frequently get to go down to the US, so um, I was able to get my hands as soon as this dropped. And regardless of what the bad, really, really, not even bad, terribles reviews were that first came out on this palette, honestly for me, it was almost like a no-brainer that I was gonna pick this up. Pick this up. The only reason why I didn't pre-order this was because it just sounded so horrible from like across the board that I wanted to at least wait till it's it dropped in a store where I can actually swatch the shadows for myself and see right then and there if it's something that is really horrible. And for me, I usually can tell right away if like a palette is just horrible at least for my personal preference so when this dropped i happened to be in washington and i was in an ulta and they had it and they had of course a tester out and when i first watched the pigmentation and the texture and the creaminess i, I was like what is everybody talking about so you clearly can see the shades that i've used and it still looks so pristine because honestly you guys have wanted to do um full swatch of all the shades so that i can post it on my instagram and that's so that's why i try to keep it so pristine but honestly this is i think the most pigmented palette that i have i think i mean this art pa this art palettes are so pigmented but this is absolutely you get the color in the pan and it only took one swatch one one tap for me and the feel of the texture to know that this is a good palette and this is a good formula it's a good palette so this one is the abh right here and then i'm gonna show you the mustard shade do i still have any fingers this is the mustard shade new wave I don't know if you guys can see that because it is very bright right now. And that was a little tap. And this is the mustard shade. So I know that everybody's saying it's so messy. Honestly, you guys, this palette, the one that I got, it's not as different as the other palettes, as the Mario palette, which they released last year, the Master, the Master palette by Mario. This one right here, which I've used so much of. Honestly, you guys, it's quite messy as well I don't I haven't experienced for myself the level of like um fly fly away the level of fallout and just sparkle of particles everywhere that everybody has like literally it looks like they're just meaning to make it look so horrible I know they're not maybe their palettes are that way but honestly from my experience with the palette that I got it's no different look how much fallout this thing has as well and even with um modern renaissance you can see that I've used this look how dirty this is I mean I personally using this and I've used the subculture palette a couple of times I've I haven't experienced anything that horrible where the powder was just you know the powder particles were just flying around when I the moment I dabbed my brush in it and um, I completely agree with what Stephanie Nicole said nobody or was it Wayne Goss will go into a palette and just start swirling that way um, I didn't do that with either of these two palettes and even with this two I did feel that wow that you're getting quite a bit like the moment I tap I'm gonna show you guys Okay, if I tap this one here, this way, there's fallout right there. I mean, you guys can see, I don't know if you can see, I am going to zoom this camera in. Oh, wait. You guys can see that if I tap it, something comes out. I mean, there's like fallout in the pan. I hope you can see that, but watch I'm gonna tap my brush honestly I it's like I don't know what the fuss is about I think it's a good palette I think it 
pigmented so well and I think with the Anastasia with Anastasia I love how you know their color ski color stories are just so unique they are just so unique and um, yeah I think that's all I can say on this two shades adorn and this one here let me show you adorn I mean this is just like you guys it's like melted bronze gold I have so much stuff on my lid but I'm gonna show you you guys really really with my fingers it's an amazing palette and I think it's just I don't know what's going on but I don't feel it's any different than my ABH and modern renaissance in terms of like fallout and all this so I highly recommend that palette as well. Last but not the least, you guys, are the Dior 5 Color Palettes, which this summer 2017, they reformulated. So all that are in stores right now are the new formula. And I have a couple of them here with me. And so I'm not going to swatch everything, but I will share with you guys the palette shades that I have. And honestly, they're all the other, the color stories of Dior in terms of luxury brand palettes is, I absolutely love. I think it's very, they're unique, but they're still wearable. And they're colors that you don't typically think will go together, but they do. This is one of the one that I have used most. It's 657 Expose. This is how it looks. The Dior new palettes were formulated. The color in the pan is the color that you will see translate in your lid. Not just in a swatch, but in your lid. And But I will swatch. Oh my gosh, my fingers have all eyeshadows. Um, I will swatch. And this, I have so much swatches now. I will swatch some of these. Let me wipe without the old swatches I have just to show you guys and give you an idea but honestly even in the swatch um it really it's when you have it in your eyes the color in the pan is really what translates so i'll begin with this muted champagne shimmer that's how it looks and then this like shimmery what do you call this light yellow this is my favorite, this olive here, the one in the center. It's such a unique crease color. So that's how they look. I'm hoping this will translate beautifully in the back of my hand. Not the best swatch, but that's a swatch of all those shimmers. And then this brown right here is such a good accent for the crease. And let me just swatch this. And these colors, like the olive, really translates like an olive green on your crease. It doesn't end up becoming like some kind of a muted gray color that you don't know what the color is. This brown is warm as well. It also translates once you put it in the corner of your eye. So, and across the board, the formula, the consistency, the pigmentation is um, it's consistent. This is the one of the first ones I bought, and it's the, I think, exclusive to Nordstrom. This is an 867 Attract. I love the medium bright pink right here. It is a matte, I believe, and I will show you guys. This really translates like a pink on your lids. So it's like having like a Morphe palette or a Too Faced shade. This is not a typical luxury brand shade, but in a luxury brand formula, and it is amazing. This beautiful rose gold, it's epitome of what gross gold is, I think. Let me just get some of those colors out of my fingers so I can show you guys. This is the rose gold. It is, it's not a sparkle. It really like a, a, a luster of a rose gold. This is absolutely the definition for me of what rose gold is. And I hope you guys can see that. 
I know it's very bright right now and I hope you guys can see the rose gold here but um, yeah so that's the other palette I have two more palettes um, one I have not used and it's magnify but I have used it a couple of times for clients in the store this is such a unique all matte palette which I haven't even used and this one is a beautiful beautiful red I will show you guys I haven't even swatched this I can't believe it look at this red and it really really does translate that way on your lids look at that red they're just such unique colors and the matte formula the the five colors this new release is the first time they do an all matte palette usually with Dior there is um, some palettes that well not some usually with your all palettes have a shimmer if not one at least and then this is another one that I have not used I thought I I only had one that I haven't used but this one is in 157 magnify and this looks similar to one of the older palettes they had just the formulation is better but this is magnify is a beautiful palette for weddings honestly you guys like instead of your brown like browns like this they're just so typical you know um and weddings you want to look blushing you want to look different you want to look bright and these especially at least for brown eyes brown hair or brunettes it's such a good nice different contrast so that is why i think like the dior reformulated five color sh palettes are one of the best releases of 2017 dior has always been a brand that i like in terms of quality um, their palettes, but this is by far even an elevated, improved version of the original. So these are some of the best palettes of 2017, summer 2017 releases that I think are worth worth it, worth investing your money on and getting your hands on. I hope you guys found this video interesting and informative. I will put more information down below. If you guys have any questions, let me know or comments. Let me know down below what you thought of this video and share this video, like this video if you did like it indeed. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day or a great evening.